Your lens is dirty. <laughs> yeah, I got a lens cloth right here, guys. Okay. Is you recording? Hold on. I got a lens cloth right here. Ah, that's perfect. Yeah, there we go. Spit on it and wipe my face off. Thank you. So uh, every time that I come back to the property, it's like completely changed and I'm always amazed at uh, what Summer and Sonder do and I always feel like a lazy scumbag. But uh, you know, to each their own, we all have our own departments. But you know, you guys, when you work on things, you see like the granular detail because you're very zoomed in. And me, when I come back here, it's always like, wow. So I'm back at the property now, checking things out and Sonder's gonna give me a little tour as to what has developed since my last time here about six months ago. Yeah, and I'm sure that if you're watching this, you have the same experience because you're seeing some of these tours every season we try to do one. And this has been the one that is like, we've been here for almost a year, well, a little over a year. So we can compare the original tour, the very first tour to this tour and see what's changed. And that's always very exciting. So I'll show you some of the things that we've changed and the projects that we've done this year. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about what we're gonna do next year. Awesome. So the very first thing is in the original tour is we had this tree here, this willow tree. And that's one of the first things that we did is we took that out uh, because it was just getting out of control. Right. It was reverting back to its own color. And now we have a magnolia tree here, which is gonna have these really nice, beautiful, pink purple flowers uh -huh. coming up and even in the winter right now i think it looks beautiful because you see these buds coming in oh it's yeah really fuzzy buds. It's, it oh, looks nice. great it's awesome wow and then to complement that what summer has done is she's planted uh hundreds of bulbs around this and they're already come kind of coming up here you could see them mm. sticking up out of the ground and I'm these are sure. these are tulips or what are these um, around I, here yeah there's actually um Tulip Critica Hilde, which is a white and pinkish red tulip. And they're small. It's like a, it's a, they're not like the tall tulips. They're very small, six inch tulips. Mm -hmm. And then I have a, a cyclamen, which is a, a cyclamen that has pink flowers. That those are also low growing. So nothing that's high growing. Oh, so they're growing here And then you too? don't just have that here, you have it like all <laughs> over the place. Oh, so they're here too? Yeah. So, so I don't, I don't all, the, all the colors are going to blend together, that's the idea? Yeah, because I think, um, you know, this tree is like a, a pink and it's going to be white and pink and that tree is whitish pink and there's another tree white, so it'll start to feel a little bit more uh, continuity in here. Yep. And then we uh, adjusted the paths, we redesigned how all the paths terminate towards the house. Wow. So main priority was to make them wider. So you could see here that we've added about a foot to the, mm -hmm. to the left side of it. Right. And as we continue here, uh, we also expanded this here uh, to get away from this tree. Because right. the idea is that you wanna, when you approach this, you have two entrances. You can go here or you can go there. And it's nice to be able to feel like this is kind of a centerpiece and it feels like you have just as much space to go here as you have over here, but it's a different entrance. And I love this, I love this roundabout, how big it is in the center. I almost feel like you want to put like something circular here or, you know, those like vintage like lamp posts. Obviously that's not a good place for it, but you have like a nice kind of Yeah, well this whole path here, right? design creates a lot of those opportunities, right? To put something at the center or at the corner. Right. A little monument a that monument. you can run into. Yeah. And this tree is kind of doing that for this island here. It's this monument in the right. center that you're walking past. The other thing too is Beautiful. this will be a project for next year. Obviously these mm. bricks are not gonna stay here. Yes, yeah, so next year what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the dirt and earth saddle uh, in so that, because we dug a trench here for the internet, Mm. We want to make sure that everything is compacted before we put stones here. I see. Otherwise, they're going to just sink in like you see here. Oh, I see. I saw that and I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, that looks very ugly right there. Wow. Now, then another thing is we started to stain the house. So we found a stain that looks kind of like dark brown. Dark chocolate. Dark oh, chocolate okay. brown. That's beautiful. Um, you could see the wood grain through it, which, which is what we wanted. Um, so we sanded the old stain off the wood, and mm. then we have this uh, stain that's very dark that helps to protect the wood really well. 
Um, the only thing is that it leaves these like gray marks on it that you can't really get off. So we're not quite sure what to do about that yet. And we're kind of glad to discover that before we do the whole entire house. It's not such an issue for the walls because you don't really touch those or yeah, step on those. But here on the deck, you can right. see it. It's, oh, yeah. it's really gray and it won't go away. Now, if it rains- It won't wash off? Nope. Oh. Now, when it rains, it's yeah. actually better because then it looks like it's gone, but then as soon as it dries up, mm. it's there again. You so- have to really scrub it, I think. The other thing is we put racing stripes on the window. You can disregard those oh, yeah. so the birds don't hit the window. So uh, yeah. a bird hit the window and just died, unfortunately. All right, what's next? Uh, next, uh, we uh, we put in these garden beds. Oh yeah, and this garden bed too. We expanded it. So Summer couldn't help herself, and she went ahead and planted this whole thing up. Um, I basically had to resist her as much as possible because I still needed to paint and stain <laughs> this section here and right. dig this trench. And I'm like, don't plant anything yet, but you know, Summer, she's got the plants already, and uh, she wants to throw them in there. So. Looks good already though. It's starting to come together. So how, it's very detailed. How, how high do these go? Like this is gonna all fill in? Um, or is it a low set? The only plants that are, that'll get like maybe three feet is this Pyrrhus japonica. Mm -hmm. And this Nandina will get about two and a half feet. This is on the edge of our garden zone. So I'm not sure if it's going to survive or not. All the rest are mainly ground covers. Looks really great. So then um, to continue with the planting, we also created these huge garden beds and around the paths that we designed. So this will be more for herbs, correct, Summer? Yep, that's and then this will be more for any, any kind of pollinator plants. And we, you this created this really enough. nice stone path through it. And I think what made this, like sometimes you can look at a stone path and it might look a little cheesy, but what I think made this look more natural is that you put stones on each side of the path, which makes it look more like a riverbed. Yeah, like a dry riverbed. And then smaller stones in between. So I think that works really nicely. And then you could just kind of walk across. And then the whole point with this design is that you want to make sure that at no point there, at no, at no point you want to cross the garden. You should feel that there's always a path to where you need to go or where you want to go. So right. that's, that's kind of the way you designed everything here. And then you I have think it looks cool mushrooms cute. here. Look at these mushrooms. <laughs> oh, they're fake. That's my tchotchkes that I put in here. This is the only tchotchkes. That's very nice. And then we get to this mess over here. Oh yeah. This is a huge section of our lawn that we took up to basically plant 70,000 bulbs total. And we took different approaches. So in this area, we took the grass off, we put the bulbs down, and then we put dirt back on top and mulch back on top. And then Summer has seeded the area. So you could see if you get close, you could see the grass seeds here. So These are low meadow seeds, correct, Summer? Uh, low grass seeds. Low grass oh, seeds. Oh, I see. So there's, so there's bulbs in between, and there's, and there's bulbs. mixed this grasses. Is an yeah, this one's coming up already, actually. Yeah. Wow. See, when you guys told me 70,000 bulbs, that number is so huge that I thought it was like the whole meadow, but it's funny that it's just be contained in this area. It's, it's gonna look insane. Yeah, it's gonna look insane. It's gonna be, it's gonna have about a 40% coverage. That's wild. I can't wait to, to see this. And it, it'll be nice to see like this footage of us here now with it all grim looking right. and then to see it sprout later. <laughs> really and cool. Then, and then we also have bulbs planted here. Yeah. But those are planted with a different approach using a tractor. Right. That's specially designed to plant bulbs. So it's a different approach from what we did here. And we're happy that we actually did it that way as well, because it's quite devastating to take up a really nice lawn that's been grown there for years and has been doing really well and comes back strong every year. But to take that out then. But this, situ this area here also had a had quite some undulations in the land, so we really wanted to level it out as much mm. as possible. That's why we also took the dirt out to have an opportunity to level this before we turn it into something pretty. Right. And this and this pathway through it is always going to be grass? Like yes. Lawn style? I believe so. That's cool. It's just really nice to walk on, especially with bare feet as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you just come out here and walk on it. 
Um, wow. But then the idea is that some of these islands that are not paths, the grass will be a little taller and have some more flowers uh -huh. in it yep. and things like that. And then we'll have, we won't have to mow that so often. We could just mow the paths. We bought a mower that's the exact width of the path. Uh, okay. And that way, um, you know, you could just drive around on the paths and then it's mowed and then you're done. You don't have to mow the rest so much. That's so yeah, I also, I also built some more steps towards the deck. So there were a couple places where we really liked to be able to get up on the deck, but there was no steps. So we just added steps in some places. I didn't even notice that, actually. <laughs> I just thought that was always there. Really? Oh That's when God. it's done right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I so guess. Seamless. This has been a huge project for Summer because she's basically transformed this garden here from a high, tall grass growing mess with trees that are completely eaten alive by the deer into a memorial garden for the previous owner that was really into plants and had a nursery here. So it looks a little dead right now, although it still looks kind of interesting. Yeah, it's not yeah. Bad. I was I was here at the very beginning of this summer and I remember you were thinking like, should I do this? You weren't sure how far to trim these and how bonsai to go, but even now it looks amazing. It looks like a diorama at the Natural History Museum. <laughs> I'm really, really into it. And then- They were very shaggy. Yeah, it was just a, it, I wouldn't even call it a garden. It was just like a, before it looked like a fluff of uh, like clutter. Yeah. It was just, it was all cluttered. And then behind there is where we dumped all the lawn that we took out. So that's now also a raised garden bed. So that way we can continue to plant back here. And then there's a little walking path in between here. Oh, okay. So you can get to everything. So this, this, this path goes where exactly? This um, is a path? It connects to here. Okay. And what's, what's planted here? More bulbs? Nothing. Nothing. This is just buried there. This is just mulch to rejuvenate the soil? Yeah, and we'll prep it. You know, that maybe will be a next year project. This is also kind of a low spot and now it's high up, so, yeah. So it's yeah. not gonna be wet. But like this, this is gonna make some of the healthiest soil, right? That's the idea? For sure, for sure. Yeah, our soil is not that great, so it's good to throw something on top. Because what we found out is that we got the bottom of the pond, so we have... Yeah, so we realized from speaking with the old previous owner uh, that they actually excavated, when they excavated the pond, all the dirt is basically the hill that we're standing on now. So that's how we got, like basically our, our earth our, is like the bottom of the pond, which is very clayey and oh. yeah. So, so mending these beds actually makes sense, you know? Right. Then the next huge project is that last year, this whole area here was just filled with old nursery equipment, yeah. metal spikes coming out of the ground. This. Like this All is, kinds of random things. This is the most impressive thing for me coming back here was this was a absolute toxic wasteland before. <laughs> with gravel and you could like see the actual shapes of where old greenhouses and things were. Now with even just this, uh, what is this, buck these, what now? These are oats now. Oats? Like even with just the low oats, which are gonna die and give uh, life to the soil, right? Yes. Even with just the oats, you can start to see the shape of the land itself, right? Like before you didn't even notice that the hill had any kind of sweep to it or any kind of magic to it whatsoever, just because I didn't even want to look at it. It was just like gray. But when this is here, you can see that the land has like- Undulations. Uh, yeah, Slow. like it has real character yeah. and this to me is the most impressive thing that you guys have actually done because before it was really hard for me to envision this, but now I can kind of see where it's going. Yeah, yeah and with the, with the green oats, it looks, looks really good, so. The buckwheat right. looked the best though, because when it was- The buckwheat dry. looked really good too, and it gave a sense of what the meadow would look like. Yeah. So Ooh. after, I have a question actually, like after the winter, what is the next phase of this? This dies during this winter, yes. and, then, and then what comes next? So we started to seed this meadow with, um, we have about 70 different types of grasses and flowers that we decided to put into here, but there's been a seed shortage. 
so we only got about 30% of those grasses and uh, flowers. So we seeded one drift like off into the distance past this one pond and we're getting about seven to eight more different types of seeds in. So I'll see if we could create more drifts or more shapes. It's really hard to, I'd rather seed it all at once. But right now we are not seeding it all at once. We're kind of seeding it in stages and that's not ideal okay. because you don't know where you put the other seeds. Right. But um, I'm trying to go on my, my drawing of the shapes that I made and triangulate. I think it should be fine, but you know, it won't be as exact as like going in with a bunch of small plants and plugging them in, but that would take too long. So mm -hmm. once we seed it, which should be now, um, then uh, between now and like January, ideally, then those seeds will start to come up in spring, but it really takes about three years for a meadow to really fully establish. And then we get to this section here. This is gonna be an orchard section. Mm -hmm. So because our soil is basically non-existent or this section here it has a lot of rocks in it actually, we, had, we created these little mounds here so that we can plant some trees. And you've planted some already, That's black, black currant. Yeah, so we'll have shrubby stuff in the front so that we don't block this uh, birdhouse. They don't like to have too many high trees right there. And then the other birds right. are gonna have larger trees. And then Sonder, why did you guys uh, decide to do it this way, parallel? Yeah, so after designing it a couple different ways, it just looked too much like a grid. Mm -hmm. We liked the idea of having it random, but uh, like having it in straight lines is better because you can mow between it more easily. And that's how we kind of came upon this like diagonal design because it looks random when you look at it straight. Um, but at the same time, I don't know, it just gives a little interesting shape to it. And also we're gonna have a future, in the future we're gonna have a greenhouse there. And that's quite geometric as far as the design around it and the landscaping. Whereas the landscaping and design around the house is more round and curves. This will be more like geometric. And then having these lines kind of at a diagonal coming out of the main path. So over here will be the greenhouse. So the, the greenhouse is there in the middle, right. and this is kind of the straight path that comes yeah. out of it. So it looks very full and thick. Yes, so you can take all these diagonal roads here to get to the garden over there. Yeah, even Instead like, of a row of trees being in the way, you can't get through it, you know? Even driving up this road here and seeing the sections is gonna look really nice. The way yeah. it's displayed, it'll flay out kind of. It will also lead your eye towards the, the gardens there. So yeah, it's... This is really, it's really It's interesting. Great. And once we, once we started to mark it out on the land, we were like, okay, this, this can work. And, and we just I, put it in. I have a question. So you have the meadow and then you have the mounds. Is there gonna be a transition? Like, does the meadow just go underneath the tree or will it be kind of like there where there's always circles around the trees? Yeah, great question. So the, we planted in between here. Yeah. We planted in between here like a low meadow. So that was low lawn. Okay. This is like a low meadow that gets no more than 12 inches. And ideally, you'll probably see meadow seeds like this move into this. Ideally, nice. Ideally, um, it won't be all in it just because you, you you don't want the roots competing too much. But this is important for tree roots because trees don't want to be they want to be in a comfortable spot. And they, this is all you know stone. Right. And you'll see that sometimes the water will build up right here. So that's great for tree roots because the tree roots will suck up the water when they need it. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see some of the meadow plants kind of go over, but we'll probably always keep on throwing some mulch on top, so they might get snuffed out here and there. Okay. But this is low meadow, and then it, sh it sh will hopefully, ideally, it will go into high meadow, so uh -huh. it won't seem, it'll seem like a nice drifting transition. Yep. Well. But we'll see. It depends on where the seeds take, you know, um, depends on where the seeds go. You know, they'll get blown around, and as much as you think you're going to plant in drifts, they'll plant themselves wherever they want. That's going to be the magic of it. Yeah.
Cool. And then uh, we got stuff down near the road, right? Yeah. Okay, well, let's go to the road right now. Okay, so the main things that have changed here is that we put in a gate and we put in a section of deer fence. And in order to put in that gate and deer fence, we also had to take out a lot of trees. And there were a lot of trees that had to go already because uh, there were dead ash trees from the ash borer. Oh, there's our mail lady. Hello. <laughs> um, so we basically cleared the forest out. You could see how much wood is on the ground. And it will open up the forest to a lot of uh, new opportunity for smaller trees trying to grow because there's more light available. And a lot of it we actually wood chipped, as you can see here. Right. So this will be great for her summer because she can plant more trees in here like she's done over here. Uh, although they've been eaten by the deer because her fence wasn't done in time. Um, the other half of it, we actually chopped up for firewood. So we have a good stash of firewood over there and it also now looks this, quite nice. This looks great to me. When I first saw this, I said, who the hell laid all this out like this? It looks good, it must have been Sonder. <laughs> It's like very like ADD oh, brain laid out, laid out perfectly. But so yeah, that's and you you guys built this lean to or this was already this here, was right? already here. But there's and there was a just bunch of trash underneath, underneath here, yeah. and there were all these trees here in a row that kind of blocked the driveway from the barn. Right. So we took all of that out. Some of them are still left, like this one. Right. We couldn't cut all of them. We wanted to leave some of them. Yeah, um, we just don't like but we wanted to make the barn feel more part of the property, so having a fenced off didn't really work for us. Yeah, so, yeah. that's great. Those are the main updates, and uh, another thing we put in is the driveway here. So well, a couple things that need to happen next year that we'll hopefully have an update video on is that this area gets really wet, so we need to have some places on the property, we need to figure out better drainage because there's a lot of water that stands here. You can see the ice, uh, which is not good. Uh, we have a lot of water draining from here. So we need to figure out some uh, irrigation and um, a road. We also need to fix our roads because they, uh... oh, there's FedEx, hello. Okay, great, thank you so much. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Sponsored by FedEx. <laughs> FedEx is great. Sponsored by They them. sometimes bring it up to the house. And sometimes not. Sometimes they don't, but that's fine. So yeah, that's uh, driveway, irrigation, or at least like water management. How do you say that? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to understand the hydrology of the land a little bit more. Exactly. See, and last then, year you guys had a really dry year, so you didn't yeah. see any of this, but this year yeah. was a heavy rain year, so you can really start to see the cracks in the pond and how the stuff drains down all the way down here at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, and then uh, a, a big part of next year is gonna be renovations as well. We have this little building down here that we're gonna renovate. Yeah, so this is the house that used to be the office where all the business for the nursery happened and we just want to turn it into a nice little home that someone can stay in down here. We can rent it out, stuff like that. So it just needs some improvements. Some TLC. Some TLC. And then uh, it'll be a great little home down here. I'm excited for this project. Yeah, and there's already a beautiful garden because there are so many crazy trees here that he actually planted some of them in the garden next to it. So the garden's already half done. So plus the house is already half there. Well, more than half there. I was, uh, I was never really excited about this house before until you guys started to clear around here and I started to see this meadow and then all these different distinct pieces suddenly became connected. And then it made me, be, be, you know, because before this was just all gravel, like a dump. And I was like, who the hell would want to stay here if they want nature? This is not the place, it's right next to this. But now it's all kind of merging together and I'm really excited for this little house project too. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, we got a lot proud. done, and uh, hopefully we'll get more done next year. But that's that's about it. I think there's definitely more projects in the planning, but we'll have to just go 
day by day, week by week, to you get guys, it all done. You should be very proud with what you did here. It's very impressive. And that is our winter tour, and we are cold, so we're gonna get go in and get a cup of cocoa. <laughs> <laughs>